Hello everyone, this is Professor Roth, and today we're doing the digestive system. So the first thing hopefully you've noticed right off the bat is I have already opened my ventral cavity. That is in a separate video, so if you have not watched that, you might want to go back and watch that and open that up if you need to. And so now what we're going to do is just look through the organs of the digestive system. Okay, so here is the thoracic cavity. This is the abdominal pelvic cavity. The structure that divides the two cavities is the diaphragm here. Now we already looked at the diaphragm when we looked at the respiratory system, but just underneath the diaphragm, this very large internal organ here, this is the liver. Okay, notice that there are several lobes of the liver. And the next thing we want to do is try to find the gallbladder. Okay, so the liver is what produces the bile but the gallbladder is the structure that stores the gallbladder when it stores the bile when there's extra, extra bile. Okay, so what you want to do is just in the very, very anterior part of the liver, you just want to gently pull apart your, the lobes of the liver and look for a little pouch. Okay, so right here we have this little pouch. That little pouch is the gallbladder right here, sandwiched between these two lobes of the liver. Now often the gallbladder will be green because bile is sort of green, so sometimes that can help. Mine unfortunately doesn't appear to have any color, but yes, this is the gallbladder right here, sandwiched between these two lobes of the, li the liver. Okay, well, coming down. Just so the usually the liver sort of takes up most of the space, but it's generally off to the right a little bit. And then off to the left, we have the stomach, rather large stomach. Okay, so there's the stomach. And then even further off to the left, this structure right here, this is the spleen. The spleen. Okay, so when we look at the stomach here, coming off of the greater curvature of the stomach is going to be the greater omentum. Now generally the greater omentum will be covering your organs and inside of that greater omentum we've got a whole bunch of fat and so that sort of just acts as a little shock absorber protection of the organs in the front. You also have some blood vessels running through it and so connected on the very left side that's going to be the spleen. And notice the texture. Okay, that's the spleen no muscle in there that looks much different. Okay, so here is the stomach. Let's go through some of the regions of the stomach. Okay, so the esophagus, oh we forgot about the esophagus. There's two places you can find the esophagus. You can move the trachea out of the way. You're going to see a soft tube running behind the trachea. So notice that the trachea is striped the soft muscular tube behind the trachea, posterior to the trachea, is the esophagus. And the esophagus will run back behind the heart, it'll go through the diaphragm, and then it's going to empty into the stomach right here. Okay? So the region where the esophagus empties into the stomach, that will be the cardiac region of the stomach. And then coming off of that, you have an expanded pouch. The first expanded pouch is going to be the fundus, fundus of the stomach. Then we have the body of the stomach. And then this last little tail-like end of the stomach before it empties into the small intestine would be the pylorus, pylorus. Okay, and then we have two sides. The big, big C right here, the big side is the greater curvature, and then the small side is the lesser curvature. The greater omentum is going to be attached to the greater curvature, and the lesser omentum is going to be attached to the lesser curvature. Okay, and then if we continue down, here's the stomach. The stomach will empty into the small intestines first. Okay, so that's the small intestines. The small intestine will become, the first part of the small intestine is the duodenum or duodenum, however you want to say that it's fine with me. Okay, so the duodenum or the duodenum, that will become the jejunum, and then at the very, very end we'll have the ileum. 
Okay, so you should be able to identify the duodenum of the small intestine because that's the one coming out of the stomach. Okay, and while we're here, let's go ahead and find the pancreas. And so to find the pancreas, let's take the greater omentum and flap it up. Okay, so we're sort of looking underneath the stomach. And you'll notice that it, inside the mesentery, so this, this membrane right here that holds the small intestine to the back wall of the abdominal cavity, that's the mesentery. So embedded in the mesentery is going to be the pancreas. And the pancreas can be found kind of two places. It's sort of like an L shape here. It, can, it runs underneath the stomach and then it travels along the very first part of the duodenum. Okay, so it, one important thing to note is when you're dissecting, texture is very important. Texture is gonna give you information. Okay, so if you look and you see like stripes, that, that's muscle, okay? That's because the vesicles are, are bundling and, and structuring the, the muscle. If you look and it has sort of like a fluffy tissue, I, I think of it as sort of like a vacuum packed cloud, that is going to be glands, okay? So this right here is the pancreas and the pancreas is a mixed gland, both an endocrine and an exocrine gland. So along underneath the stomach, okay, so again, I took my, my greater omentum, flapped it up, found the pancreas, and, and it follows along the first part of the duodenum. Okay, so let's go ahead and open up that stomach, see what's inside there. Okay, so what I want you to do is cut, so kind of take your stomach and sort of flatten it out. And what I want you to do is cut along the greater curvature and so it'll flap the whole thing open and that's gonna allow us to look inside. And then we're gonna continue that cut and try to find the pyloric sphincter, which is the narrow region that um, controls the movement of food into the small intestine. Okay, so you can really start anywhere. It doesn't particularly matter where you start. Okay, just try to keep along the greater curvature. So keep it nice and flat as you're cutting it. And don't be surprised if there's food in there still. You want to have your paper towels ready. So I take that stomach and I open it up. And when I open it up, so mine's pretty, mine's pretty empty. And so the size of your stomach and what you see inside of the stomach will depend on whether or not it was empty or full. Because mine was fairly empty, I have these little folds in the stomach. Those folds in the stomach, those are called rugae. Okay, so these are all rugae and the function of those is as the food is packed into the stomach and needs to expand they're going to stretch out and so if your stomach was really full when your mink died you might not even see these folds you might not even see those rugae okay so let's continue the cut through I didn't keep I didn't go all the way yet Okay, I'm going into the duodenum, which is the very first part of the small intestines. Okay. So at this point, I find it usually find it helpful to kind of get a paper towel and clean out some of the liquids in there. That way you can see what you're looking at. Okay, so see right here where it sort of pinches in, right here, where it pinches in a little bit like a sphincter, that is the pyloric sphincter. And that's going to help control the movement of food from the stomach into the small intestine. And well, you can even get a paper towel and sort of clean it because I want you to see the texture inside of that duodenum. Okay, so once I clean it, you can start to see that it has a very velvety, almost like a carpet texture. And that's because inside of there, that's where all your little villi are. Okay, so remember those little extensions, those little finger-like extensions of the mucosa. 
and that's what ha allows it to have a lot of surface area so that it can be very, very efficient at absorbing nutrients into the bloodstream. Okay, so we're, now we're going to compare the texture inside of the duodenum to that inside of the large intestine. Okay, so notice that the texture inside of the duodenum is really pretty fluffy and that's because of those villi, the extension, the finger-like extensions. And then if we go open and cut open into the large intestine, so here down in, this is the rectum, this would be, and this right here is the colon. If we look inside of the colon, okay, so I cut it open and we're going to, and I want to clean it a little bit. You can see that there is still some texture in that mucosa. It does have intestinal crypts, but it's not quite the same sort of elaborate texture that we see with the inside of the duodenum. Okay, so we don't have those villi. Okay, so the last thing that we need to do as part of the digestive system dissection is to look for your parotid gland. Okay, so here on the cheek, there is a muscle, and that muscle is the masseter muscle, and you may still have some connective tissue surrounding it, but what we need to do is find the parotid gland. Okay, so look behind that, okay, just posterior to that, and what you're looking for is a difference in texture. So this smooth part right here, that's the masseter muscle, and so what we're looking for is some fluffy texture. And here it is, I can already start to see it. Okay, so there is still some connective tissue stuck on there that we need to get off. Okay, so we're gonna do our stick and spread. Stick and spread. We're gonna peel it off. Okay, so now we can see that this part, that's muscle, right? We're not trying to go for the muscle. We're trying to go for the fluffy texture. Okay, so we did a little bit of a jump forward while I did some dissection here and I got it pretty good. So this area here, that is going to be the masseter the masseter muscle, and then running kind of in the middle of the masseter muscle, you have the parotid duct, and you might also have some other nerves in there, the facial nerve and things like that. So um, the duct will be the, the sort of loose, um, more collapsed one, the, the softer one here. Okay, so that's the parotid duct. And then going into the parotid gland, there's a parotid gland there. And this right here, in humans, that would be called the submandibular gland, but for, for the minks, it's just the mandibular gland. We're, we're not, for my class at least, we're not going to be looking at that mandibular gland, just the parotid gland here, and the parotid duct, which is this one right here, running across the, the masseter muscle. Just also wanted to point out a couple other things. Look, we also have some little tiny lymph nodes in there as well. Okay, so the little kind of bulb structures stuck in there, those are just lymph nodes. And then we are here, right here, we have the, the, jug, the jugular vein. Okay, so that's kind of cool. You can follow that down if you want to. Again, unfortunately, we do not have time to go into the blood vessels. Alas. Okay, that's it.